Hello, and welcome to our webinar about PIR composite panels construction, how to build confidence in fire safety performance with Huntsman. I'm Simon Robinson. I edit Eurothane's Technology International magazine, and I'll be your host. Before we get started, there's a little housekeeping to get out of the way, though. You can listen to this webinar either using your computer audio or on a dial-in connection. If you want to dial in, then please check the confirmation email you received about this webinar for details. We will be taking questions during the course of this webinar. If you have a question, please use the questions button at the bottom of the screen. You can see it there, it uh, looks like a pair of speech bubbles. And click on that and then type in your question. Please keep your questions short to the point. They've got a far better chance of being asked if they're short and we'll be taking questions at the end of the session. I will moderate them and I may group similar questions together. We won't be talking about supply, contracts or pricing or any commercial information, however. The webinar is being recorded and registered participants will receive a link to the webinar within a few days of its completion. It will also be posted on the website of Eurothanes Technology International, which is the snappily named www.utech-polyurethane.com, and it'll be there for about a year. So you can come back. Okay, so for the reason that we're all here, we have two excellent speakers here from Huntsman. We have Chirk Lenstra, Senior Marketing Manager Installation, and Diane Dames, Global Fire Senior Expert. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand straight over to Jerk, who's going to take us through the presentation. Thank you, Jerk. Thank you, Simon. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to this webinar organized by Huntsman and UTEC around how to build confidence in fire safety performance. The objective of our webinar today is to share first and for all our experience in the field of fire safety with you. The regula regulation and the requirements in the market are constantly being adjusted based on the events and market requirements. We have a European context at which regulation is built, but as the building and construction market is more organized on a country level, local requirements can change quickly and independently of each other. In addition, we want to share our latest fire rated solutions that we think can help you make those products that can withstand all these dynamics. Some time ago, we held a webinar on fire safety and sustainability. Quite a few of you attended that event. The event raised a lot of interest and today we invite you to accompany us through the specific aspect of fire safety that can help grow our PIR market composite panels. However, before we start with the content, I would like to introduce a real, the real expert on my site that can help us on this journey. Jan Daans has a long history and experience, and she, she will help us on this journey. Jan, can you introduce yourself? Sure, Jack. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm the global senior fire expert um, at, uh, at Huntsman. And uh, I hold a PhD in uh, science and have uh, more than 25 uh, years experience in, uh, in the field of fire science, regulations and standards. For example, I was involved in the development of the EU harmonized fire standards uh, in building and construction. Thank you, Dian, for this quick introduction. Let me also quickly introduce myself. My name is Cerk Lenstra. I'm senior market manager installation, res re responsible for, amongst others, this market segment of composite panels. I have a long working experience in the plastics industry. I started some years ago in an additive company and in a, as a technical development engineer and via different roles in marketing, business development, and eventually business management, I ended up in the, uh, at Huntsman. So I hope with this, you know who's in front of you. And so let's now start the show further. The menu we have put together comprises of several courses. I will not go into detail on all of them, but for those who are not yet familiar with Huntsman, we will give a very short company introduction, who we are and how we have built strong knowledge and expertise in the foam insulation. We will also share with you our insight on how we think that 
to be compliant with regulations and why we think that the fire safety challenge is also an opportunity for composite panels. Finally, we will open up for Q&A session. As stated, you are muted. You can type in the questions in the text box. We will collect them at the end and try to answer them. Huntsman is an American-based company founded by Mr. John Huntsman about 50 years ago. Today, Huntsman Corporation is a publicly traded global manufacturer and marketer of differentiated and specialty chemicals. We have a wide product portfolio, and these are sold worldwide to manufacturers serving a broad and diverse range of consumer and industrial end markets. Dian and myself are part of the polyurethane uh, business unit for Europe. Our European headquarters is based in Everberg, and that's near Brussels, Belgium. Our main manufacturing site is in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. We have several U uh, European production and distribution centers uh, spread around Europe. But for more information about Huntsman, we invite you to visit our website on www.huntsman.com. When we look at construction sector in general and the metal phased composite panel applications more specifically, several major trends influence the way we choose materials and building, build houses, warehouses, and public buildings. We have the more traditional elements like energy efficiency, fire safety, prefabricated and modular systems. But recent years, sustainability, cons sustainable construction, climate resilience, and acoustic comfort have gained importance. In the previous webinars, we've talked about energy efficiency and sustainability. In this seminar today, we will briefly see how energy efficiency trends are influencing the market for polyurethane insulation, and then we will focus on fire safety. More specifically, we will deep dive on the different trends that are influencing the intended building fire safety performance of PIR composite panels and how to grow in the segment of fire rated buildings. The Energy Performance of Building Directive, or EPBD, was first developed in the start of this century. The first version of the EPBD, Directive 202-91EC, was approved in December 2002 and entered into force at the start of 2003. It has as objective to strengthen the building regulations and introduce the Energy Performance Certificate for buildings. Since then, adjustments and improvements have been introduced. In the graph on the right-hand side, we can see what impact such adjustments have. One can see a direct link between the member state initiatives to reduce the building energy consumption and the substantial increase of total insulation demand, with growth outpacing GDP, indicated by the red line. However, the blue line represents PU demand, which shows a much faster growth, outpacing general uh, insulation growth. The fact that we have such growth, we think, can be explained by a few factors. Polyurethane insulation is a simple and cost-effective way to maximize energy efficiency of a building. Due to the low thermal conductivity, polyurethane insulation can achieve very good energy performance of the building at a competitive thickness and weight of the, influent, of, of the insulation layer. This, combined with numerous other benefits like installation, simple processing, durable and fire performance, the pure technology offers an exciting toolkit when planning, costing, and designing a new building or planning to renov renovate one. So already in the start of the century, Europe and local governments were looking to improve the building standards to reduce energy consumption during the usage of a building. But now, about two years ago, in 2020, another dimension is added, the Green Deal. This has changed the context and adds in additional requirements and timing. When the Green Deal 
With the Green Deal, it is the ambition of the European Union to become climate neutral by 2050. That means that Europe will reduce the greenhouse gas emissions as much as possible and compensate for any remaining emissions. One can already start to see the effects. The packaging industry needs to recycle 65% by 2025. The automotive industry, where now new requirements on LCA are being introduced as uh, in a, uh, in the automotive industry, new requirements on LCA or life cycle analysis are being introduced as we speak. The introduction of the construction industry will follow. A renovation wave is needed to achieve an energy neutral building stock by 2050. The regulation around that is being developed as we speak. Overall, this is, a good, this is good news for installation and related industry, and we expect PU-based insulation and applications will grow like we saw in the graph before. The EPBD, but also the CPR and the National Building Codes will be reviewed and adjusted. Fire standards and requirements, which are already an essential part of the last two regulations, will be updated. And that's a logical outcome of all the initiatives that are currently being taken. At Huntsman, we have anticipated and are anticipating the impact of the Green Deal on the construction market and the growing opportunity for PIR in composite panels. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a few minutes, a few seconds, sorry, to look at this question in our poll. And the question is, in the new EU context, is your company reacting and anticipating and please select all that apply energy transition sorry energy transition circularity the revision of eu construction products regulation and national building codes separately how do you see the market evolving now this is a single choice question do you see growth continuing as before for insulation and composite panels do you think that growth will increase as a renovation wave and energy transition speeds up or are you concerned about challenges coming from the Green Deal, for example, the circular economy? I think we may need to come back to the answer from that poll a little later in the presentation. Chirk, would you like to continue? Yes, um, thank you. Why do we focus on fire safety? We are producers of PU systems solutions to manufacture rigid foam core composite panels. It is our responsibility to focus on fire safety. Now, ah, there we see the results. I will, I will quickly comment on them. Circularity is something that is indeed being uh, focused on. We see it also in regulation, Italy, France being uh, creating a, a framework around it. And for the question around market evolving, uh, yes, I think we all see, we see also the current outlook growing uh, on uh, energy uh, saving and uh, regulations around that. So I think the, the outcome of this is indeed in line with our expectations. Thank you all for confirming those, and uh, I will proceed with the, the presentation. So as stated, this responsibility of to focus on fire safety. Now that we have arrived in a, a time of change, the following three points are important. Changes in fire regulation and standards are happening to accommodate the energy transition and the transformation of building stock. The fire safety level needs to be maintained and there is an opportunity for growth in fire rated composite panels, as shown in the graph on the right hand side. The consumption forecast in Europe for the fire rated composite panels is estimated at 5%. Innovation, innovative high fire rated peer solutions exist and all, and also the peer technology can fulfill many of the performance criteria and outperforms in some. So in conclusion, awareness about fire safety and innovative drive growth, growth the fire rate composite panels. And from this point on, 
Diane will take over and go more in detail on regulation drive. Thank you, Jack. So uh, good, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so let's do a recap of the fire regulation, which is uh, a two level uh, regulation. One is the EU construction products regulation, the CPR, which is applicable to construction products and is about harmonized test methods and uh, classification. The second is a set of national building codes to achieve an appropriate uh, performance level of the building stock as the member states are responsible for fire safety of buildings in their country. The national building codes are obliged to refer to the harmonized test standard and classifications set by the CPR. Performance requirements are set on the level of the building, the building elements and construction products. Fire safety is a substantial part of the building codes. In this slide, you see fire assessments that are mandatory for composite panels, if required by the National Building Code. There is the CE mark uh, that shows declarations for reaction to fire and for resistance to fire performance. In the reaction to fire tests, the response of a product to a starting fire is assessed. Examples are the small flame test and the single burning item test. In resistance to fire tests, the ability of a building element to contain a full fire for a certain time is assessed. For example, a non-load bearing wall or roof. In the picture on the right, an example of a wall panel with its reaction and resistance to fire classification is shown. Underneath the CE mark, you see that additional national marks may apply for composite panels in some EU member states. These are national application tests. This means that the composite panel building solution is tested and not just the product. An example is given for Germany. A general construction technique permit is required for the application of self-supporting composite panels. Another example of national application tests are large-scale facade tests, which apply in several countries. Composite panels are not typically used yet in this application, but that can come, provided that the requirements can be met. Currently, a European Commission-sponsored project is developing a harmonized large-scale facade test. It is also relevant for composite panel producers to follow this development. Understanding and acting according to the regulations and standards is essential to enable construction professionals to use fire-rated composite panel products. From product to building performance, how is, the, how is the appropriate building performance achieved? The C mark shows the fire classification of the composite panel or the panel element, but how does this lead to the appropriate building performance? How to demonstrate that the intended fire safety level of the building can be achieved? What is needed for a designer or a specifier to be confident to use the PIR composite panel? This question applies for all construction products, irrespective of their reaction or resistance to fire behavior. That translation needs to be made and national building codes are the basis for that. This applies for all essential characteristics, including fire safety. There are two distinctive ways to do this, via a prescriptive or via a performance-based approach. So national building codes can be prescriptive or performance-based, or they can be a mix. And what this means is explained in this table. 
where features of a prescriptive and a performance-based uh, regulation uh, are compared. So let's have a look at this table uh, concerning uh, prescriptive. You see that uh, the performance of the construction and the products are the construction products or elements uh, are uh, are uh, stated, and it also sets the required product performance classes of these. The responsibility in such at such the prescriptive part of regulation is with the regulator. While when you look at uh, the performance of the building uh, in a performance based system, uh, there. Uh, the performance of the building system or the building is looked at and sets uh, uh, building safety objectives, but not how. It does not uh, specifically set rate to a reaction or um, a resistance to fire performance. It doesn't need to, de to do that. In this case, responsibility is with the architect or the fire engineer. So with prescriptive, you have more standard traditional practice in the EU for performance-based. It's a recent and growing approach in the EU. For the prescriptive one, we can have a risk of exclusion of good performing systems. And in the performance-based, there are opportunities and, and there is an alternative to, uh, to prescriptive. Um, for example, to <clears throat> Um, in the EU member states, the prescriptive approach is still mainstream. However, a performance-based approach can be applied in most countries and is on the rise. So, for example, today in Europe, the performance-based approach is often used for complex buildings where the prescriptive approach does not work. Uh, another example, in several countries, the performance-based approach is already applied when the product is approved via, via a large-scale application test. The performance-based approach works and leads to growth opportunities for PIR composite panels. So in practice, well, let's look at composite panels in construction, namely the value chain. In a performance-based approach, the architect or the fire engineer are responsible for the building design. However, the actors in the value chain have a responsibility for their products and services. Here we see the relevant actors with their specific responsibilities. The raw material suppliers, the composite panel producers, the contractors, the architect or fire engineer, and finally, the owner of the building who has its final uh, responsibility. In conclusion, fire safety of a building is a result of each contributor in the value chain. So meeting the fire safety objective of a building is everyone's business. It is important to achieve confidence with designers and specifiers a new generation fire rated PIR composite panels and also for new composite panel applications. The following two points we consider important to increase confidence. Fire safety competency and secondly, clear information such as certificates, standards and guidelines. We will say a few words now about fire safety competency. Why is competency important, for example, for architects and, and engineers? Architects often need to rely on different experts, engineers, for example, structural, energy, fire, sustainability experts, in, uh, for example, in complex projects. While new energy efficient technologies arise, we need to make buildings structural and fire safe. At the same time, they need to be functional sustainable, have good aesthetics, be integrated in the environment, etc. So competency in different domains is needed for architects and engineers to be able to make the right decisions in the design and construction of a building. Fire safe design can be ensured through appropriate fire safety competency. 
In the past decade, the education programs for fire safety engineers have developed strongly. However, they are not yet sufficiently involved in construction products at this moment. Uh, that stated the survey amongst the architects. And this survey was undertaken by the Modern Building Alliance. We conclude that the fire safety competency is required to deal with the complexity of building design and performance. The second point is the importance of clear and accurate information to achieve confidence in the market. The architect and design engineers need to get good information about the product to make good decision. For this, each participant in the value chain needs to provide the appropriate information for the next actors in the value chain. This information can come in the form of certificates, standards, and guidelines. This slide shows a schematic of extra voluntary certificates, labels, and guidelines. By the way, we talked about mandatory requirements before in the context of the CE marking and national application tests. Here we have summarized the voluntary initiatives into third party certificates and industry initiatives. Certificates, either mandatory or voluntary, make it easier for the design engineer or architect to understand the performance of the product and to confidently make a good selection. Voluntary certificates and industry initiatives can be a valuable addition to the mandatory ones in applications and building types, where fire requirements are high and where performance-based options are accepted. They help bridge the gaps in performance-based regulatory approaches and increase the confidence of architects and engineers to make good decisions. In the next slides, some examples of certificates certificates, standards, and guidelines are shown. These slides do not intend to be complete, but just give examples and show the principle. This slide gives information and examples of voluntary uh, certificates. Certificates are provided by third party service suppliers or approval bodies. The services they provide can include fire safety engineering consultancy, research and development, testing, risk assessment, and obviously certification. The certification is a result of quality approval process, of a quality approval process. The certificate is in fact a quality mark of the product or building system. It is a clear information for designers about the fire safety performance of the products in the building system. As examples, we chose uh, on the right side, uh, FM approval and uh, loss prevention council, both property loss prevention companies for use of composite panels in commercial and industrial facilities. FM is internationally known and the label of certification is widely trusted. LPC is mainly UK based in Europe, is also active in other parts outside Europe and is also widely trusted. Certifications instill confidence and drive differentiation of your products. Industry guidelines and labels can also be helpful. You can find examples in the table on the right. They are issued by an industry association or an alliance of stakeholders in which the industry association can be involved. For example, PPA Europe, the Association for Steel-Faced Composite Panels provides European, European guidelines for composite panel installation and the APEC quality label. The other associations or alliances operate on country level. The aim is to create a common best practice in the value chain. It supports 
manufacturers to provide valuable and up-to-date information with their product. This table provides examples and as stated before, it is not meant to be complete. Other examples of good pra practice may exist. So now I give the floor back to Chuck. Thank you, Diane. For the thank you, Diane, and also thank you for the explanation how the Green Deal could potentially adjust fire standards and regulations on several different levels. Our product offering is balanced to serve the market. We're trying to anticipate regulation and changes in building codes, so you can use our materials. Daltopur and Daltopur formul formulated polyol systems can potentially cover the needs in composite panels produce, that composite panels producers have for both non-fire rated and fire rated products. Within the fire rated class, we have several products differentiated in terms of reaction to fire and fire, re uh, fire resistance. One can state that Daltopir coded materials composite panels achieve a B classification of reaction to fire when combined with suitable processing and panel design, which is the highest achievable classification with polyurethane based, polyurethane based products. It will lead too far to go in all details, but once one can achieve a BS2 D0 classification for reaction to fire, on EI15 for fire resistance with Altopir FR products. With Altopir XHFR, uh, manufacturers can improve the fire resistance and fire performance even more. Our Daltopir XHFR can potentially help manufacturers, manufacturers to achieve a BS1D0 classification to, uh, for reaction to fire and an EI30 for fire resistance. As we are a system de developing company, all our MDI systems, which have been developed for PR foams, require a high IP ratio, a higher temperature of the conveyor, and the use of pre adhesives, which are also part of our commercial offering. Other features which also improve this, uh, improve with this product family, are also mechanical properties and durability. Before we move to the Q and A session. We quickly wanted to touch sustainability. This trend is here to stay. In the beginning of the webinar, we explained that regulation is changing, and for this meeting, we touched upon the impact on fire flame rating requirements. But for, of course, this will also have significant impact on the way we make PU and PR future. We are working on several fronts. One is the incorporation of recycled content into the system. Recycled content can find its origin in old pet bottles, but also other wastes. The second element is the use of bio-based raw materials. This is actually already happening, but has not been so explicit till now. In our newest non-flame uh, non rated products, Delta Pur offering, we use bio-based products. And finally, we also are investigating a mass balance approach. We, like others, are looking into the way with certificates to convert parts of our product a bit like when we are, uh, we like others are looking in a way with certificates to convert parts of our production a bit like when you buy green electricity from the supp your supplier. You know the electricity you buy from the net has this not changed. Just the generation of the energy was compensated or done with a more sustainable process. On the right hand side, you can see an example of a Daltopir XHFR product line with which can contain up to 10% recycled content. We expect to have more dedicated webinar on sustainable solutions in this installation in the future, but wanted to already give a sneak preview. So, coming back towards the webinar, in conclusion, we can say that the intended building fire performance can be achieved through correct building design and the right product choice, installation and use. Each actor in the value chain has an important contribution towards fire safety. With major changes to come in the building stock, there will be opportunities, but also challenges, and creating confidence with design engineers and architects will be very important. We presented mandatory and voluntary measures which contribute to building fire safety, increase confidence in PIR-based composite panels, and increase your competitive advantage. 
Hansen will continue to improve the performance of PU and Huntsman can support you in that journey. We recommend you to engage and develop your own initiatives to increase confidence and grow in the fire rated market applications. Please do not hesitate to contact us for further information. Hello, once again, ladies and gentlemen, our final question for today before we move on to the Q&A session is, what do you think is more important in your view? Fire performance or sustainability? We'll let you know as soon as the poll closes. But before we get to that point, I'd like to thank today's speakers, um, Chirk and Diane, who I think have given us a very interesting um, presentation on the possibilities uh, offered by the change in regulations in Europe and the uh, use of PIR foam uh, to provide insulation in buildings and a whole range of different situations and applications. Chair, would you like to talk a little bit about the um, results of the survey? Yes, we know it's a tricky, it was a tricky and maybe a little bit cheeky uh, question. Uh, but uh, I can tell you, I don't know if the people can see it, there, there, there might have been some technical challenge there, but uh, about uh, if I correctly, 75% of the responsive responders have responded that uh, uh, fire performance is uh, very important of the, let's say, the 65 people and of the, for the question on sustainability, that has a little bit of a lower, lower score, about 50% say it's important. So it's a, it, we know it was a tricky question because at this moment in time, fire is always important, especially when there are external events. but. It's good to have at least put sharp with direction where we all need to go to maintain uh, our uh, presence in the market. Thank you. That's right, Chirk. I think it's one of those, possibly a question where everything that's urgent is important, but not everything that's important is urgent. So that can be a, an interesting balance. Before we go to the, the questions from the, uh, the panelists, I've got, a, sorry, from the attendees, I've got a few questions of my own, which I'd like to try um, out on, on, on our presenters. Um, Diane, I think you're still muted. So if we could just unmute yourself, that'd be fabulous. Um, thank you. Um, and before we start, and, and Diane, this could be a bit of, this could be an enormous question, but what is the impact of construction systems in fire tests? Well, it is very important. Uh, we, we, we know, we all know that the reaction to fire tests, uh, the as single burning item is influenced by the mounting and, and, and the panels design. But uh, for large-scale testing, uh, it is uh, even more important. It's essential to look at the whole construction system. So a construction system consists of different materials and components. And in case of fire, uh, a holistic assessment is needed, which considers the materials, the components, and uh, the details of, of the construction. Yes, so for, uh, for large-scale testing, it's especially uh, performant, uh, important. A uh, quick question of a chirk here. Um, which technology do you think has the most potential to grow, just in view of the you know, forthcoming challenges around the Green Deal, regulations, the renovation wave and energy transition? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I think it's a good question. Both NFR systems, so the non-fire rated systems and the fire rated system currently are being developed in such a way that we can quickly, in between brackets, interchange raw materials so become more sustainable so we already are starting to develop uh, uh, our portfolio in such a way that we are anticipating um, potential regulation to come uh, and we are convinced that uh, the technology that we have uh, can suffice it uh, with that actually um, we are going to work on uh, we are working on life cycle analysis which is one of those measured uh, ways to uh, to see if a product is better or worse, uh, uh, let's say, uh, than the previous one, and we are uh, previous generation, and we are going to try and use that as a kind of guide to improve our portfolio in, in, in future steps. So our current portfolio has a good base, and we're anticipating that in the future, we will only develop uh, based on that uh, criteria of improving on a life cycle analysis point of view. Sure. So, Chuck, if I was a, a, a rigid board manufacturer, what, preside, what percentage of recycled material would there be in, in foams I made with your systems? 
Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the polyol side, so most of the recycled content currently is being worked on on the polyol side. So in the foam part, we can go up to, let's say, between 5 and 10%, depending on the system and your process. Uh, on the MDI side, we are not there yet for recycling. We are working on other uh, schemes, uh, like I said, the mass balance process. Uh, but specifically on recycle, I think it's fair to say that we can move between 5 and 10% at this moment in time, realistically and commercially. Cool. Cool. And I'm thinking, Diane, um, a, bit, a little bit about the lambda limbo, you know, how low can you get your lambda values for these phones? And what's the options available to enable those solutions? Okay, so it is um, for, for uh, uh, low lambda, uh, it is uh, possible to, uh, uh, to improve um, uh, insulation performances by, by increasing foam thickness and by also by improving the foam insulation properties. We know that for polyurethane, uh, the foam insulation properties are already very good so that we can go with thinner materials than with um, uh, most uh, or many other uh, insulation products. Uh, the uh, further improving foam insulation properties is possible by influencing the foam morphology and also by using low conductivity blowing agents uh, available in the market. Cool. Okay, so that's a, so that gives you quite a wide, wide range there. And is your performance based Oliver? Is your performance based approach based on a short short term or long term trend? Yes. Um, the development of the performance based approach is ongoing uh, as we speak, and and it's on a longer term process. However. Uh, it, is, it is at this moment possible to apply the performance-based approach in most uh, EU member states and UK, obviously, and uh, is used uh, by proactive composite panel producers. Um, it is also applied by some insurance companies and by engineering bureaus. So there is an opportunity and uh, enhancement can guide, uh, can guide you there. Fine, that, that's that's helpful. That's helpful. So, what's your response, Chirk, to uh, towards circularity, and how do you make these rigid foams more circular? I think this is a great challenge. I am very positive about it. Um, I think, in general, in the industry, in the chemical industry, it's a great opportunity to reinvent ourselves, and specifically in PU, uh, it's also a way to uh, to reinvent ourselves. And we're also heavily investing in several processes to be able to recycle either post-industrial or post-consumer uh, waste. So the, big, the, bigger the bigger challenge, I think, in this time is going to be getting all that waste collected. Um, uh, PU foam is, is scattered around, uh, as, a matter of, as a matter of speech, around in different buildings around uh, uh, Europe. And it's getting that foam back into collection areas. So that's going to be, the, I think, a, a very big challenge because you're, you're basically transporting air, uh, which is not very efficient. Uh, and so that's going to be a tricky part. Uh, chemically, we already have a, quite a couple of routes to go, um, but it's, yeah, it's setting that whole process up uh, is going to be a big challenge. But I, as I said, it's a great opportunity for the industry. Yes, Chuck, I think the, the first mile, the first kilometer is often the most expensive, it's the hardest to do. And if, if you're dealing in the construction industry, properly separating waste could be a challenge. Um, yes. Just a quick question for Dan. Um, I, you know, one of, the, one of the things I thought was that the reaction to fire was dependent really on foam properties and its composition, but it seems that the, uh, the, the panel properties and dimensions matter. Could you maybe expand on that a little? Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's, uh, for example, in the single burning item test, um, a well-designed form can, can allow you to, uh, to achieve the, uh, uh, the, the desired um, euro class. Uh, but at the end, um, it, the single burning item test is a test on the panel. And so the uh, panel properties, all the panel properties are important. Uh, the joint detail, the thickness of the steel, uh, and other elements. Yeah. The same for uh, resistance to fire tests, uh, it's even more important, yeah. Exactly. And also in, uh, and in many applications, the E160 uh, requirement is the minimum for things like external walls and public buildings. Do you think that um, polyurethane could ever compete with things like mineral wool in these markets? Well, um, okay. Um, 
there are two they are two different products and they have also uh, distinct different applications however for uh, pir i believe uh, and sandwich panels i believe there is still room for improvements in high fire rated um, uh, solutions uh, we are also actively working on that topic um, so to improve the safety of our products but also to allow us and our customers to enter new markets in the uh, high fire rated uh, um, applications and areas yeah cool cool so just time for our last question and i'm sorry if you've asked a question and we haven't got round to answer it i'm sure the huntsman will be contacting you over the next few days um this is for Chirk. Um, do you believe that the last the circular requirements will have an influence on the future growth of uh, the PU uh, rigid industry? Yes, it will. Um, I think uh, we can already see uh, regional activities initiatives around that. We expect that in the future, post usage waste, so let's say demolition waste will become a part of any supply process. Uh, in France, there are already some regulations being developed as we speak. Um, but that's still far off. I mean, the complexity, we talked about it earlier, the complexity around that. Um, I think the first step will be maybe a post-industrial uh, waste. So basically our customers, when they have a process, it, something there's always waste and you can try and reuse that. So um, is this regulation, reg circularity coming? Yes. Do we think it's going to be, let's say, built into regulations and requirements? Yes. Uh, it's now up to us in the industry to try and, and guide that process and make sure that we have the proper response to that. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's thank you very much, Jerk. Thank you very much, Diane. We've had a very interesting three quarters of an hour talking it through this this, uh, this topic, the sector. Um, as I said before, we will be posting the uh, the webinar onto uh, the website, which is utech-polyurethane.com forward slash events and you'll find it in there in a few days um we had some questions asked by the um by the panelists uh, by the attendees huntsman will get back to you with those and i'd like to thank everybody for helping uh, making this such a such a success um i'd like to thank the presenters and of course the uh, the, the audience could be us without you there's very little point of sitting here talking to ourselves um but before we say goodbye um here's chuck just to, to round up for us Yes, uh, thank you all. So also from the Huntsman team, uh, I would like to thank everybody for participating. It was a uh, fun preparing the slides. Uh, and I hope you also enjoyed uh, the, the, the presentation. Um, as uh, Simon said, uh, we will come back to you. Uh, we have noted down all the questions and we have your coordinates in the next couple of days. We will come back to you and try to answer the question that we were not able to answer. And if you have questions, comments, suggestions and ideas, uh, that you want to spar with us uh, we are open for business in that sense uh, contact your uh, uh, huntsman representative and uh, we are more than happy to uh, to think with you and try to find solutions for the future thank you stay safe and talk to you soon and, and sorry just just before we, just before we go i should also say that the the webinar will be available on the huntsman websites and presumably through its social media outlets as well so there'll be plenty of chance to see it if, if you couldn't make it here. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you for coming. And the webinar is now over. Thank you. Goodbye.